Hello, my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So recently I saw Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings post a video about 12 books on her fantasy TBR. It actually might not have been that recently because I am very behind with my watching YouTube and I'm still catching up with videos from January. So it might have been a few months ago now but I will leave it linked in the description if you are interested in checking that one out. But that combined with the fact that I'm trying to read more of the books that I physically own this year, I got me thinking that I should make a book about my favourite genre, historical fiction, which I talk about a lot, and all of the books that I have on my physical TBR that fit into that genre. These are the books that I'm trying to get through as at some point hopefully this year but maybe not but I thought I would just talk to you about the ones that I own. Some of these I've owned for a long time, some of them are fairly new to me and some of them are proofs that I have been sent by publishers. So this is kind of a haul meets uh, what's on my TBR, uh, kind of a bookshelf tour. <laughs> 14 historical fiction books that I'm hoping to read at some point in the near future. I think we should just get going. These are in no particular order, but I will do the ones I own first and then I will talk about the proofs towards the end. So the first one is Perfume, The Story of a Murderer by Patrick Susskind. This is one of my mum's favourite books. It, it was made into a film with Ben Whishaw, which I loved as a teenager. And so those are, and it is set in 18th century France, all of which are things that make me want to read it. Um, I was actually thinking about, I made a video a while ago about things I love in books and another one about things I hate. I was wondering whether you would be interested in tropes and things I love and hate specifically in historical fiction since it is the genre that I read the most of. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in that. But this one is set in 18th century France and it is about a man who was one of the most giftable, gifted, one of the most gifted and abominable personages in an era that knew, knew no lack of gifted and abominable personages. personages. His name's Jean-Baptiste Cramouy uh, and he has no personal smell but he has an incredible sense of smell. He decides he wants to make the most perfect scent ever I think which leads to murder um, at least that's what I remember from the film I know this has been described as witty stylish and ferociously absorbing um, sort of beautiful writing and set like I said in 18th century France pre-revolutionary France which is a period of history that I'm interested in reading more about um, so it is a almost a classic. I don't know if you could consider it a classic. Yeah, first published in 1985, so I don't know if it quite counts as a classic, but it's a modern classic. And as I said, one I've been meaning to read for a long time. One that I haven't owned as long, although it does look a bit battered because my copy is second hand, so it doesn't look as pristine as some of these others, is um, Washington Black by Essie Edugin, Edugin, by Essie Edugin. Um, and this Essie Edugin is a Ghanaian Canadian author, I believe. Um, and this is one that I first heard Books and Lala talk about. And I know she's not a historical fiction reader at all. Um, so the fact that she really, really loved a historical fiction book makes me intrigued um, to see what about this appeals to people who don't necessarily read historical fiction. It was also shortlisted for the Booker Prize. And as I've talked about here um, on the channel before, I've had a fairly good track record with Booker Prize books. There are some that I don't like, but the vast majority of them most of the shortlists I tend to enjoy. Um, this is about two brothers who take the helm of a Barbados sugar plantation. Washington Black, an 11 year old field slave, finds himself selected as the personal servant of the eccentric Christopher Titch Wilde, an inventor, explorer and abolitionist whose determination to build the perfect aerial machine mystifies all around him. Soon Titch's idealistic plans are shattered and Washington finds them himself in mortal danger. They escape together but then Titch disappears and Washington must make his way in the world alone, following the promise of freedom further than ever than he ever dreamed possible. And this is inspired by a true story of Washington Black. Um, and so I think it's about uh, enslavement and um, how this abolitionist still keeps this boy enslaved. So um, that's uh, an interesting idea. Very, very highly praised and won several medals. So yes, looking forward to reading that one. Another one that is a book of book, and that is At Night All Blood Is Black by David Diop, which won the International Booker last year. Um, and this one I um, was always intrigued by. Um, it was on one of my anticipated releases videos last year and I ended up buying it last year as well. Um, but I know Kieran from Katie Books didn't love this one. Um, this is about two boys who are Senegalese soldiers who fight in the First World War 
um, in France's army until one of them is wounded and dies in a shell hole with his belly torn open. Without his brother, uh, Alpha is alone and lost amidst the savagery of the conflict. He devotes himself to the war, to violence and death, but soon begins to frighten even his own comrades in arms. How far will Alpha go to make amends to his dead friends? So I've talked about before how uh, World War One and Two fiction is not necessarily something that I feel the need to read a lot more of, particularly when it comes to like the European arena um, of war, uh, which this is set in. But as I have also mentioned before, books that tell that from a different perspective, so this time from a Senegalese perspective, is something that makes me more interested in reading a book set at that time period um, than otherwise. This was translated by Anna Moskovaki, and I do know other people have really, really enjoyed it, so I am intrigued. Although the quote on the back is from Viet Thanh Nguyen, who wrote The Sympathizer, and I really didn't like The Sympathizer, so, but hopefully I will like this one. The next one is one that is from an author that I have read from before, and that is Beneath the Lion's Gaze by Marza Mengiste. I read uh, The Shadow King by Mengiste back at the beginning of 2020, right at the beginning of this channel. Really, really loved that book. It was one of my favourite books of 2020, and that was set in Ethiopia in the 1930s during the Italian invasion. This is set in 1974 in Ethiopia on the eve of a revolution. Jonas kneels in his mother's prayer room, pleading to his God for an end to the violence that has racked his country and his family. His father, a prominent doctor, has been ordered to report to jail after helping a victim of state-sanctioned torture to die, and his brother has just joined an underground resistance movement, a choice that will lead to more upheaval and bloodshed across ravaged Ethiopia. Now, I really enjoyed The Shadow King, as I said, and I think that Mengiste really writes conflict really well, so uh, looking at a another period of conflict in Ethiopia's history, I think that she will be able to cover that quite well. There was also a part of The Shadow King that was set around the same time as this, um, and yet it made me more intrigued to learn more about Ethiopian history. It's not a period of history or a time or a place that I know particularly huge details about, and I think that Mengi State is a writer who will definitely um, work for me, or at least she has in one book. I do have a slight um, history of being let down by the second book I read by an author, um, so hopefully that won't happen to Mengi's day. Then I also bought last year The Liar's Dictionary by Ellie Williams, and I bought this because a lot of people were raving about it. Um, I think that uh, Simon from Savage Reads talked about this because it was shortlisted for an award that he was judging. Um, maybe it won an award? It doesn't say on here. Sorsenby's new encyclopedic dictionary is riddled with fictitious entries known as Mount Weasels, penned by Peter Winsworth, a man wishing to make his lasting mark back in 1899. It's up to young intern Mallory to uncover these Mount Weasels before the dictionary can be digitised for modern readers. A world full of meaningless words, will Mallory finally discover the secret to living a meaningful life? Now, that premise at the back makes it sound like it's not historical fiction because it's set about digitising a dictionary but I'm wondering if it's set between the two time periods between that and 1899 because I know it has been advertised marketed as historical fiction so I hope there is something historical in there <laughs> if you've read this let me know in the comments if I am um, making spurious claims about the lies dictionary but yeah it's just been described as de delightful kind of a thriller very pacey um which is not something i usually read but because the writing has also been described as beautiful i'm hoping that that will make it just kind of a fun romp which i do like in my historical fiction another one from a writer that i have read before is the secret scripture by sebastian barry so i have read um days without end by sebastian barry and i had thought it was one of the most beautifully written books I had ever read, but I had some sort of conflicting feelings about the plot. Um, I will leave the vlog where I read it up there in case you want to go and check out what all those feelings were, where they came from. This one was gifted to me by my stepmom's sister, my step aunt, I don't know if that's a thing, um, but it was gifted to me by her. And I know, yeah, he's, he's, it's won the Costa Book Awards and it has probably got just as beautiful writing as Days Without End. The mental hospital where psychiatrist Dr. Green works is about to shut down, and he sets about investigating the history of his patient, Roseanne. She was committed there as a young woman, and now her records long lost is nearing her 100th birthday. At the same time, Roseanne is looking back on the tragedies and passions of her life through a secret journal. Her turbulent childhood in rural 1930s Ireland and the subsequent marriage which she believed would finally bring her happiness. When Dr. Green finally uncovers the circumstances of her arrival at the hospital, it leads to a secret that will shock them both. 
So as I've talked about before on this channel, uh, my parents are Irish, um, so I am someone who wants to, so I do definitely want to read more Irish fiction and learn more about Irish history. Um, the only bits I know are from what my parents tell me about their childhoods and things, so it's not uh, very extensive. Um, so yeah, definitely historical fiction I like to read for that reason, so I am looking forward to reading this one. Then one that was so hyped the year that it came out that I bought it that year and I just have never gotten around to reading it. It's set in the 17th century, which is another historical time period I am interested in reading about, and that is The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. So yeah, this one, I think that the reason I haven't read it yet, despite was because it was so very hyped and then I read a lot of people feeling kind of lukewarm towards it um, and it kind of put me off but I recently watched Claire Fenby talking about this book and it made me more intrigued again. On an autumn day in 1686, 18-year-old Nello or Uttman arrives at a grand house in Amsterdam to begin her new life as the wife of a wealthy merchant, Johannes Brandt. Though Though curiously distant, he presents her with an extraordinary wedding gift, a cabinet-sized replica of their home. It is to be furnished by an elusive miniaturist whose tiny creations ring eerily true. As Nella uncovers the secrets of her new household, she realises the escalating dangers they faced. The miniaturist seems to hold their fate in her hands, but does she plan to save or destroy them? So yes, very well loved. And if I do read this, I will then watch the um, BBC adaptation with Anya Taylor-Joy, uh, which I would like to watch. And as I've mentioned, 17th, 18th century are kind of the periods of European history that I'm currently the most interested in. Um, so I'm probably more drawn to this than I was when I first heard about it. And then another one by a writer that I love, or at least have loved one book of, we have The Lacuna by Barbara Kingsolver. I read The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver years ago, like a decade ago now, and I absolutely loved it. And it's been one of my favourite books ever since, although I haven't reread it, so who knows if it would stand the test of time. Um, but this one won the Orange Prize for Fiction in 2010 um, and is set in Mexico. So this is set in Mexico in 1935. Harrison Shepard is working in the household of famed muralists Diego Rivera and his wife Frida Kahlo. Sometimes cook, sometimes secretary, Shepard is always an observer, recording his experiences in diaries and notebooks. When exiled Bolshevik leader Lev Trotsky arrives, Shepard inadvertently casts in his lot with, an art, with art and revolution and his aim for an invisible life is thwarted forever. So, like I said, I have loved Barbara Kingsolver's writing before. This is a very, very chunky book, which I think is one of the things that has put me off. Um, I don't ever seem to read very many books that are this long. This is nearly 700 pages, 670 pages. Um, so it's not something that I read a great deal that is this long um, and I think that's what puts me off but what I love is Barbara Kingsolver's beautiful writing and also I love political themes in my historical fiction and I know that the um, Poisonwood Bible was very political from the back I can tell that this is going to be very political as well um, and so yeah I'm drawn to this one but I'll need some encouragement because it is so huge. The final one that I bought for myself um, is the Burning Chamber by Kate Moss. I bought this one very recently when I went to Dorset. Um, I will leave that vlog in the cards if you are interested. And the reason I bought this one is because for Christmas, my mum bought me a um, workshop with Kate Moss and Maggie O'Farrell. And I've read Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell. I haven't read any of her other books, but I haven't read any Kate Moss at all. Um, so I feel like I need to before I can take that course. Well, obviously I can take it without having read it, but I feel like I want to. Um, so hopefully I'll be reading this one fairly soon, but again, it is very, very chunky. This one is 576 pages long. Um, I don't tend to read books that are much longer than 350 pages very often. Uh, so this one is set in Carcassonne in 1562. 19-year-old Minot Joubert receives an anonymous letter at her father's bookshop, sealed with a distinctive family crest. It contains just five words. She knows that you live. But before Minou can decipher the mysterious message, a chance encounter with a young Huguenot convert, Pierre Radon, changes her destiny forever. 
for PA. PA has a dangerous mission of his own and he will need Minu's help if he is to get out of La Cité alive. Um, this one is quite thrilling, I think, and very much a story with a lot of plot. Um, so I am intrigued by that. Um, but I, as I said, it's very, very chunky. I don't read a lot of 16th century um, outside of the Tudors, so that will be uh, something new for me. So yes, hopefully, hopefully this will be a good one and hopefully this one I will actually read pretty soon. Those are the ones I own, on, well, those are the ones I bought myself or was gifted at some point or stole from my mother um, on my physical TBR. The rest of these are proofs that are coming out this year. So this is almost an anticipated releases. I don't know if any of these have been released yet. Um, so the first one on the top here is These Days by Lucy Caldwell. And I have to say, this is a Second World War novel, which I said doesn't really hugely interest me, but as you can see on the front there, there is a quote from Hilary Mantel. So she said, adroit, precise storytelling, atmospheric and satisfy satisfying. This is a novel of real substance. And if Hilary Mantel says it's a real substance, then I am going to try reading it. I did talk about potentially doing a video where I read books that Hilary Mantel recommends. Um, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. So maybe this one would be, fall into that category. April 1941. Belfast has escaped the worst of the war so far. Over the next two months, it's going to be destroyed from above so that people will say in horror, my God, Belfast is finished. Many won't make it through and no one who does will remain unchanged. Following the lives of sisters Emma and Audrey, one engaged to be married, the other in a secret relationship with another woman, as they try to survive the horrors of the four nights of bombing which were Belfast's blitz. These Days is a timeless and heartbreaking novel about living under duress, about family, and about how we try to stay true to ourselves. So queer stories in history is always something that I am drawn to when it comes to historical fiction. Um, so the um, sapphic relationship in here definitely sounds interesting to me. As I mentioned earlier, my parents are Irish. Um, my mum in particular, she's from Derry. Uh, so um, the north of Ireland, just like Belfast. Um, so that will is also, I want to read more fiction from that part of the world. So that's why this one appealed to me specifically. Getting through these are quite a lick. Um, this one, so this one is out. This is The Betrayed by Rihanna Akake Melvin. Uh, this one came out on the 10th of February. Uh, this one is Favour and Favour. And I don't know when it's out because this is a finished copy, not a proof, so it doesn't say. Um, but I will leave it in the description if you are interested. Um, but this one, yes, this is The Betrayed. As I said, this is not a finished cover. I'll put the finished cover here so you can see what it actually looks like. Um, set in a time of dictatorship and political upheaval in the Philippines, The Betrayed tells the story of two sisters who love the same man. Their passion threatens to lead them to betray not only each other, but all their father stood for. Shy, idealistic Pilar initially resolves to carry on her father's fight against the regime, while her flamboyant older sister Lali reacts by marrying the enemy, Arturo, the dictator's godson. Each tries to find their place in this violent world, but can they withstand the corruption of politics and the relentless pull of their own desires? So, as I mentioned earlier, um, reading historical fiction from around the world appeals to me. I haven't, I don't think I've ever read a book by a Filipino author before, um, so I'm looking forward to doing that one with this. Again, very, very chunky. Uh, the proof is 460 pages. So it is a big, long book, um, but I mentioned I love politics and history. When those things combine in fiction, um, that is something that I'm really drawn to. This one is also out. This one came out on the 3rd of February, and this is Devotions by Hannah Kent. Um, and this one is, I have read Burial Rites by Hannah Kent, which is another piece of historical fiction. That one is set in Iceland. Um, and this one, and so I know I like Hannah Kent's writing, um, which is why I requested this book. Um, and this one, this one is set in 1836 in Prussia. Hannah is nearly 15 and the domestic world of womanhood is quickly closing in on her. A child of nature, she yearns instead for the rush of the river, the wind dancing around her. Hannah finds little comfort in the local girls and friendship doesn't come easily until she meets Thea and she finds in her a kindred spirit and finally acceptance. Hannah's family are old Lutherans and in her small village, worship is done secretly. This is a community under threat. But when they are granted safe passage to Australia, the community rejoices. At last, a place they can pray without fear, a permanent home, freedom. It's a promise of freedom that will have devastating consequences for Hannah and Thea. But on that long and brutal journey, their bond proves too strong for even nature to break. 
So I know that this is a queer book. It's on the bottom, it says on the back, Sarah Winman said, wonderful, a mighty impassioned cry to love and the land, beautiful, poetic, and more importantly, queer. Um, so yes, as I mentioned earlier, queer historical fiction, something that really um, appeals to me when I'm looking at historical fiction. And this one, as I said, has been um, praised on the back by Sarah Winman and Kieran Millwood Hargrave, both of whom have written queer historical fiction that I really loved. So um, that also makes this stand out as a book I want to read. This one came, it's coming out on the 1st of March and this is um, Mother's Boy by Patrick Gale. Again, I will put the covers of these proofs here so that you can see what they will actually look like when they come out in the early 20th century in Cornwall and books set in rural areas, rural communities are is something that I want to read more of. I feel like a lot of literature comes from the cities um, and I am definitely drawn towards rural books. Um, and this one is about class as well, which is another thing that I um, find interesting to read about. Uh, Laura, an impoverished Cornish girl, meets her husband when they are both in service in Tynemouth in 1916. They have a baby, Charles, but, Laura, but Laura's husband returns home from the trenches a damaged man, already ill with the tuberculosis that will soon leave her a widow. In a small, class-obsessed town, she raises her boy alone, working as a laundress, and gradually becomes aware that he is some sort of genius. An intensely private young man, Charles signs up for the Navy with the new rank of coder. His escape from the tight, gossipy confines of Loniston to the colour and violence of war sees him blossom as he experiences not only the possibility of death, but the constant danger of a love that is as clandestine as his work. Which sounds again like there is queer relationships in this historical fiction. So that's definitely a theme um, of these books that I am talking about. Um, as I said, class, politics, conflict, all things that interest me and small rural communities, definitely something that's stood out to me about this book. And then the final physical historical fiction book on my TBR is coming out on the 24th of February, so very soon, and that is The Gifts by, um, where is her name? By Liz Hader. And this one is historical fiction with a magical realist or um, fantastic element to it, which I don't think any of the other ones that I um, have talked about have, but it is something that I do look for in my books. Think. Um, the Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock, or um, Knights at the Circus, um, even the Essex Serpent has kind of that vibe. October 1840, a young woman staggers alone through a forest in Shropshire as a huge pair of impossible wings rip themselves from her shoulders. Meanwhile, when rumours of a fallen angel cause a frenzy across London, a surgeon desperate for fame and fortune finds himself in the grips of a dangerous obsession, one that will place the woman he seeks in the most terrible danger. Set against the luminous backdrop of 19th century London, this astonishing novel explores science, nature, religion, enlightenment, the role of women in society, and the dark danger of an abomination. All of those things sound really up my street. I love the history of science and science um, in historical fiction. Sorry. Particularly when science butts up against religion. Um, I love religion in historical fiction. All themes that I absolutely love. The place of women, bits of fantasy elements, definitely right up my street. So there you have it, 14 books um, that I physically own of historical fiction, my physical historical fiction TBR. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of them, what you thought of them, if you would like to read them, what's on your historical fiction TBR. Let's just chat about historical fiction in the comments. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe. I put out new videos every Thursday and Sunday for the most part, and I will see you again very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.